Hi, I'm Rob and we're Curious Pastimes and I'm with John who's going to talk to us about crafting. Okay, hi John. Hi. So, I know crafting is a lot of people might be interested in but might feel it's a bit complex. Can you give us a bit of a rundown on how it works? Sure, I'll try. Uh, the first thing to understand about crafting is it is quite complex, okay. but for a very important reason, because what essentially you're trying to do with crafting is to make something of value mm. within the game. Okay. Because characters carry swords and they have clothing all around them all the time, but there are certain items that have value. And most people that do know LARP is, is you have these wonderful things called lammies. Yeah. And a lammy indicates an item of value. Yeah. So what you're doing as a game mechanic with crafting is you're trying to create one of these, mm -hmm. but using role play. Mm -hmm. and using skill and resources that are available in game. Okay. And you turn all of that role play and all of that creative work, resources, skills into a laminated card, which then, if you attach it to an item, yeah. will have in-game value. So they attach it to that sword, the sword would certainly gain yes. that property. Yes, and uh, there, are, there are many ways to do it, but in Curious Pastimes, um, as I say, it's complex for a reason, but I'll do my best to try and to, to break it down. So first of all, there are three types of crafting. Okay. So for example, I am a grand master jewel smith. Right. So I can make small items, trinkets, jewelry, mm -hmm. but if I specialize, that also translates to clockwork. Right. Maybe traps. Okay. Any small mechanical item that you can think of, because again, it's a creative role play skill. Right. If I do enough research, um, for example, I play a ship's navigator. Yeah. So I am quite proficient in making compasses. Took yeah. me a while to learn how to do that yeah. in game, but I have now little laminated cards right. that say I have a compass, compass. <laughs> which I can attach to a real compass. And when somebody sees that, they're like, that's a valuable compass. Yeah. It's not just a role play item, it's a valuable role play item. Yeah. That has a lot more credibility in game in many different aspects. Okay. So I'm a jewel smith. Um, the other type of craft that you might want to pursue is a smith, which does weapons and armor. armor. Mm. And that includes all sorts of things. And anything to do with weapons and armor, smith. Okay. And the other type of craft that we have are artisans. Okay. And that is everything else you can think of. Tailors, boat builders, furniture makers, anything to do with cloth, materials, wood, that's where artisan comes in. There are a lot of artisans. Right. So we've got three types of crafting. Okay. Just to put that into the mix, you have three levels of crafting for each type of crafting. Okay. So when you start out, you'll be a journeyman, which means you can make small things yeah. and it will take you a long time to make something complex. Right. If you take the skill a second time, you become a master. Things take a little less time. Okay. So now you can make more things. If you take it a third time, you become a grand master. Yeah. And that's the best, because that means you can, you can knock out some valuable things quite quickly with the right resources. Ah, yes. And this is where the whole role play comes in. Because if you want to make, say, let's say, a magic ring. Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't do magic. I'm a craftsman. I use skill. But if I create a master crafted ring using my crafting skill, they can take that into the ritual circle and do all sorts of wonderful things with it. Um, there you go, one magic ring. One magic ring. So I have to get the materials to make a ring. Yeah. So I would find some high grade jewelry metal, which is also another valuable piece of equipment that traders may have or scouts. Yeah. And other people in game will have these little resources. I might need some charcoal for my brazier. Yeah. Another in-game valuable item. So you have to collect all these little things. You have to go and talk to people and trade and, yes. and role play. <laughs> and role play. And now, in order to craft anything, there are two essential things that you need to do if you're going to do it on your own. Yeah. And that is a workshop. Okay. And some tools. Yeah. Now, to encourage new players to do this kind of thing, because I would encourage anyone to give it a go. It's a lot of fun role playing, and I'll explain why in a minute. But a workshop is a very expensive piece of kit. Most new players won't have the resources to be able to buy anything like that. This has to be an in-game workshop. Yes, an in-game workshop. But if you go to a faction, or maybe even a large group, or a collective like um, 
the College yeah. of Celestial Studies, they will give you access to a workshop for the day. So you, as a new player, can still role play your crafting. They may even give you access to tools. And the other thing you can do is you can work with other crafters yeah. who can teach you things. Ah. So a journeyman, Joel Smith, brand new, straight out of the box. I've got my skill, don't have any tools, don't have a workshop, but I want to make a ring. Do you know what? Go find another Joel Smith who has a workshop. Apprentice with them. I'll add my work units. That's what we have as, as that's crafters. The, that's the mechanic, the work yeah, units. Yeah, that's the mechanic. And the other crafter will be like, do you know, that's really interesting because I'm working on something right now. I'll teach you how to cut gems, maybe, which requires a special skill. Yeah. So there is benefit, but there's a lot of role play. And as I say, it's a bit convoluted. Once you've done all your research and you've used the right amount of work units and you've got your tools and your workshop and everything sorted, you can then go along to the referee and say, I've, I've got all this stuff. I've been role playing for the day. And they'll say, fine. And eventually they'll give you a little piece of plastic that you can stick to your magic ring and you can give it to the rituals. Cool. That's how it works. Say it's complex, but it's fun. And yeah. Yeah. Let's get, you're doing an awful lot of role play. You're, yeah. getting, you're being kept busy for quite, quite a bit of time, but you're having fun doing it. Yes. Well, Brilliant. I often get new players ask me about crafting. Yeah. And the one thing that they ask me a lot, which is, how do I role play crafting? I mean, yeah. do I need to get a forge if I'm a smith and start bashing a piece of metal in the back? Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, is that that's the one rule we don't have. If you want to craft anything, it's up to you how you role play that. An elf might craft very differently to a dwarf yeah. or a human or a, a barbarian yeah. or a, a Norskan or a Franconian. Yeah. And as I say, I've seen elves singing to their craft to develop um, to, to shape it using their mind and their spirit. And I've seen dwarves, you know, giving it... Giving it a good yeah, with a hammer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I've, I've seen trolls, like, kicking bog goblins in boxes to, to polish their gems and get it sorted. <laughs> there is no limit to the creativity involved in crafting. So you can get really creative and really have a lot of fun with yes. that. So I would thoroughly encourage people to, to give it a go. Yes, yeah. the mechanics are complex, but once you understand the nature of what you're doing, the world's your oyster. Oh, fantastic. That's bad. Thank you so much for John. Thank you so much for doing that. That's really appreciated. You're welcome. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you did, please check out some of our other videos as well. Thank you.